Jeremiah noticed that you were correct in predicting Steve Bannon was going to be out. Oh. What, what does it mean? Has everyone forgotten? Is it just, so what? And my thought was it might be a help to the establishment Republicans that they might not have as much might behind the nut job yeah. challengers. I think that's very true. So two things on Steve Bannon. The, the, the reason that you could be sure that he was uh, on his way out, there are seven billion reasons why. So the Mercers, who are the sugar daddies of both Trump and Bannon and are major owners of Breitbart, are involved in a $7 billion tax fight with the IRS. They are extraordinarily wealthy, but getting slammed with a $7 billion tax bill for unpaid uh, taxes. Not many people can withstand a $7 billion hit. Trump has put one of his cronies in charge of the IRS, and the Mercers, I am sure, feel like their uh, circumstances have greatly improved now that Trump is in the White House and Trump's crony is running the IRS. So when it became clear that Trump was forcing people to choose between Bannon and Trump, who are you going to pick if you have a seven billion dollar tax case in front of Donald Trump? And I think it does reflect the, the real untold story, which is that Donald Trump is being controlled to a great extent now by the very same Republican Party that he ran against, that he annihilated throughout the primary, that he ran without. You know, they abandoned him after the Access Hollywood video, and he won anyway and, and pledged that he was going to destroy these, these idiots. They have instead destroyed him. Uh, he, he is their factotum as far as, uh, as anyone can tell at this point. They feel like uh, they have a moderate Republican uh, president who's going to sign whatever they send to them. Trump will say insane things. He will act insane. He will tweet insane things. Uh, but when it comes down to it, uh, the, the, de the departure of Bannon from the entire field shows that Republicans have actually uh, beaten this guy down. Sometimes when I edit what you say later, I find a kind of a hilarious uh, little surprise. So I don't know if you were speculating when you said that Trump was probably watching TV when he went and tweeted against the FISA extension. I mean, I wasn't I, I, I didn't know for sure that he was watching TV, but I'm sure that he was. Yes, he was watching Fox and he, Friends. Uh, yeah, and we said Fox and Friends. Yeah. He wants it renewed so that if a conversation innocently picked up by, by domestic spies right. reveals like a criminal act. Unrelated that, to terrorism. Uh, correct. Totally unrelated uh, to terrorism that that information can be used in, in the prosecution of, of the crime. It was the FISA and essentially this whole program that got Donald Trump in trouble with the Russian you know, stuff. This is the act that may have been used with the help of the discredited and phony dossier, capital D, to so badly surveil and abuse the Trump campaign, both capitalized, by the previous administration and others, question mark. So clearly he's watching TV. Something about this bill came up. So many people in politics now watch Fox and Friends that never used to because you ha because you have to. I, 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 I don't necessarily have to because I don't have to cover Trump like minute by minute. But if you cover Trump, you have to watch Fox and Friends because you know he's watching Fox and Friends. And, and you can see, yeah, you see his tweets and you, and you can feel the angst over in the House of Representatives. They're trying to cobble together the votes for their bill that debate was beginning at 9.20 that morning. The, the tweet was sent at, what, 7.35? So you're Paul Ryan. Uh, so yes, you've wrestled the guy to the ground in an, uh, in an ideological and a, in a power play way, but he still has that phone. And he tweets out, what, what, what's the House trying to do here? This is, this is crazy. It ends it with a question mark. And then you saw, an hour and a half later, he follows up with the well-punctuated, spelled correctly tweet saying, that said, comma, I'm actually for this bill, the bill that got me caught up in the Russia thing. Okay, we have a question about the Iran deal. What do you think is going to happen if Trump says, okay, in order to renew it next time, we have to make it bigger or tougher or stronger? He's still caught when it comes to the Iran deal with the fact that there's five other countries um, involved in this that have all, uh, A, we've already made good on some of our commitments of releasing cash, and, uh, and the five other countries are, gonna, are not going to say, okay, 
Donald Trump, you think that they're not meeting the deal and we should get out of it. Uh, therefore, OK, yeah, sure, we'll all get out of it, too. Um, no, they're going to continue trading with Iran and they do a lot of trade with Iran. They are they are their neighbors. Russia and these European countries are, are you, Trump can look at a map. They're much closer to Iran than we are. And so they are they're they're that much more important uh, to the, to their uh, inter international economy. And so Trump can Trump can ha Trump can cause problems, but he's not going to bring the rest of those uh, countries along. That's why I brought up the Fox and Friends thing when you were saying that Trump ran against the Republican establishment. Now he's owned by it. I mean, in many ways, Fox News has determined the Republican political line for a long time. And now Trump is that's basically his only haven. He goes there for praise and shelter. Right. And they know that he's watching. He lives in a world where cable television is programmed for him, not just the shows, the commercials. Uh, you have to pay a lot more to get an ad in the Washington region on Fox and Friends or on Morning Joe or on Hannity than you used to because they're going directly for Donald Trump. And it's sad in many ways that he's such an empty creature that uh, that he needs all of this affirmation. And he's 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 filled with more contradictions than, than any person I've ever come across uh, in in my life or in my reading of, of, about history. This this man who has this bottomless craving for affection and for approval and yet is the most hateful and divisive figure in national politics in decades. Wendy Jordan Isaacson says, as Professor Chomsky pointed out, we need to remember that Trump is not so different than the Republican Party. Right. When it, all, it also shows the stability in some ways of the machine, that you can put this guy on top of it and it still continues to churn. We can still renew our surveillance legislation we, and on and on.